Hey, good evening. It's uh, Saturday night, Saturday evening, June 1st. So welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7 and welcome back to a new month. So again, just, uh, just great to be here with you. We're going to look at the our nine rays of light and tonight we're going to look at the third ray of light in Matthew 5. Now this section is commonly called Beatitudes, but the Holy Spirit didn't give them that name. And I think that they've taken on a quality, which is not what God intended. These are not passive directions, directives to us. Blessed are the mourn, those who mourn. Blessed are the poor in spirit. As we've seen in the last two videos in this series, these are not terms of weakness, but terms of living in God's power. Well, the third one tonight, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. That's another one which I think is mis misunderstood because we misunderstand meekness, what that is. Remember, Jesus is saying, he's introducing the Sermon on the Mount, this beautiful literary masterpiece that he's spoken while he's sitting and talking to the crowds. The purpose of this is so that they will be salt and light, so that, as he says at the end of verse 16 in chapter 5, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So he starts with these nine qualities, nine rays of light, because Jesus is light, his words of light, that are to transform his hearers and those that they interact with. So tonight, blessed are the meek, I've titled that Living by the Power of God, because that's what meek, being meek means living by the power of God. You see on your screen right now a picture of an Andalusian horse, which was a breed similar used in war in the Roman times, in the New Testament times. Magnificent, strong animals. Some, some of the horses are even bigger, the Percheron types, these massive animals. And the term meek was meant to describe, was used to describe a horse a war horse that would do exactly what its rider wanted. So a horse was said to be meek and ready for battle when it would do exactly as it was commanded by the rider. You see, that's not weakness at all, is it? That's power. So meek, then, is being submissive to the will of God and not submissive to my own will, which is very similar to poor in spirit. Poor in spirit doesn't mean beaten down. It means I'm not going to follow my way when I could follow God's way, because that's the way of power. So being meek means that we are ready to do exactly what the Holy Spirit wants us to do in His Word, even if it seems risky to us. Even if returning good for evil seems like, I don't know about that. Being meek says, if the Word of God says it, I'm all in. And that's what described the meek horse. So this meekness it's much different than a passive wait-and-see sitting on the sidelines. Rather, this is approach that meekness is an approach which is determined, dedicated to doing the will of God. That's why Moses and Jesus are both described as meek, humble men. When you look at their life, they were not passive men. They were active. Christ, of course, being the ultimate example. So, Meek is not weak. It's being submissive to the will of God. And then the second phrase in this third ray of light, they will inherit the earth. That inheritance is not just for the future. Remember, Jesus is telling them now, go out now and let your light shine before people, before men and women and children, before kings and cultures and in the workplace. Jesus wants us to be salt and light now. If we're not salt, as he says in Luke, then we're useless. We're not even fit for the manure pile. He's intending this to be about what's happening now. And then the rest of the Sermon on the Mount is not about simply in the future. It's about the here and now. It's about living for the moment of God, honoring him. Seeking the treasures of earth rather than the treasures of earth of, of heaven. I mean, yeah, seeking treasures of earth rather than going after heaven. So this inheritance 
It's something we, yes, we have a heavenly inheritance and we will be buying into that. But right now, we can experience that by living in the power of meekness and inheriting those things. Psalm 37, Jesus is practically quoting Psalm 37 here. Psalm 37 verse 11 says, But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. And that is in the context of verses 9 through 11 in Psalm 37 of the evildoers being defeated, of God conquering them. That's what Jesus is calling us to in the Sermon on the Mount. So you see, this is a direction of great comfort and peace and power. And power is the next quality I want to talk about. Power, you know, again, I'm calling this living by the power of God. Power is living in response to God's will and not my own. When I do what God wants, that is powerful. It's trusting Him. It's honoring Him. See, Paul in Ephesians 1, that we've talked about recently, Paul wants us to experience God's incomparably great power for those of us who believe. Not a, not a life of weakness, not a life of sitting around, but a life of great power. But power to find the way that God wants us to. So you see, this third ray of light calls us to live by God's power to show His light to a watching world that is dark and without hope. And our world around us is getting darker because we have moved away. Almost every sense of the word, we've moved away from realizing that God is the center of this universe. In Him we live and move and have our being. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth by the power of God. And will be a bright, shining light as our meekness shows that we live by and in the power of His Spirit working within us. And that's the thought for this uh, third ray of light. And I pray this is an encouragement to you. Again, I love your thoughts, your feedback. I pray you have a blessed Lord's Day tomorrow. And Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday. You have a great night. Bye-bye.